This ESPN podcast is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon, Tony. Patty LaBelle, your girl, she kicked out a fan who started stripping on stage during a concert. Tony Kornheiser, in my defense, the crowd loved it. Okay, now you're going too far. I, mean, I know you like Patty, but you know, you know I, on stage? I, I'm not sure I like Patty as much as you do. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the world's greatest Patty LaBelle. I'm, she's fine. A very distinguished career, a big Boys. We are more arena people, people than we are fatty people. Tend that's to it. guys, though. We, that's we, a guy we, thing. We tend to be. So God bless us. Right. Right. On the other thing, really. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Pete Carroll is upset, Rex Ryan is humbled, and Johnny Manziel might have a career after all. But we begin today with the Dallas Cowboys Cowboys. winning the battle against the Philadelphia Eagles last night, but maybe losing the war. Tony Romo went down in the third quarter. He came up with a fractured left clavicle. Prognosis out eight weeks minimum. Wilbon, which team is in more trouble? The 2-0 Cowboys or your 0-2 Eagles? Tony, this is a good toss-up because the Cowboys are in some trouble. You don't have any of those three guys, one through defection, <laughs> you know, two through injury. You are hurting, and Des Bryant ain't coming back to those doors like tomorrow. The initial reports of him being out four to six weeks were just stupid. So he's going to be out much longer than that. Thank you, Dr. Wilbon. You like that? Tony. The Eagles are in more trouble because the Eagles don't seem to know how to play. They don't seem to know what it is they're trying to do. They got all these new parts, and, you know, he was hailed as such a genius, Chip Kelly, for dismantling the team he had that, you know, won 10 games and then coming back with an entire new team where he got rid of productive people, and everybody praised it all summer. But you oh, Chip Kelly, well, he's the you Chip didn't. Kelly. But you don't Not like exactly Kelly. Vince Lombardi where we stand Not today. Not yet. No. Uh, the Eagles are definitely in trouble. They are probably one loss away from a mutiny, either by the players or the entire city of Philadelphia. Yeah. They have a prestigious running back who cannot go forward. How many carries he is he? He cannot go you forward. You know what he's on pace for right now in terms of yards? 88. 88. Yeah, so he can't go forward, that? and, and that's trouble. I guess he forgot how they to They have run. a quarterback who doesn't seem to be the quarterback that they thought he would be. But here's why they're in less trouble than the Cowboys, because they're healthy. Yeah. Okay, the Cowboys... You and I were big devotees of Dean Smith. And we know when Dean Smith would be asked, well, if you lose your best player, what's going to happen? He says, well, you can win one. You can win one. Now, last year, other than Witten, they had DeMarco Murray. They had Des Bryant. They had Tony they had Romo. Stuff. They're yeah, all they gone. They're all gone. So, so you're saying you don't like the weed man, I'm, Brandon Weed, well, who was I'm, seven for seven yesterday in his relief I'm, role? I'm saying exactly that. I'm asking about the weed man. Is he going to go seven for seven again with a touchdown to. pass? Yeah, good, great defense and good line play on both sides. I, I think Can they go that, 500 without that as those the, guys? I think that as the season progresses, yeah. they are going to become acutely aware of who they're missing, whereas the Eagles still have personnel. I think the Eagles personnel. are going to wind up winning games, and they will get this going because Chip Kelly is a good coach. But not a genius, according to you. Not a genius. There's and a difference between a great fair. coach and a genius. Be fair. Tell the people you revel in their losses. I want them to lose every game. Okay, so there All you right. go. I'm not a, I don't throw my rock and hide down. There you go. Okay? The Eagles aren't the only team struggling two weeks in. The two-time defending NFC champs, Seattle, 0-2 after losing in Green Bay last night. Look at him throw An interesting ball. sequence in that entertaining game came when the Packers fumbled an interception return and were awarded the ball anyway, even though a Seattle player came out of the pile with it. And we can't ignore Aaron Rodgers just taking Russell Wilson to the trash talk and woodshed just killed after him. the game. Yeah, I just killed him. So what do you make of all that happened in Lambeau last night? Let me start with, with the fumble, okay, because Seattle is down seven. If they recover that ball, they got five, six minutes left, they can tie the game. Now, we see this a lot. We see scrambles a lot for the ball, and a referee pats the ground, and that's it. And then a guy from another team well, comes out with the ball. Now, if I'm Pete Carroll, I go crazy about well, he this. Did. I understand that, but, 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 but here's what I'm thinking. we see happen. this play. I, I agree with you, and I thought of that in real time last night. But, Tony, what happens is the official identifies. He's looking into the pile. The camera's not there, not that close. He identifies who's got the ball, and then he signals, first down, this way. After that, the guy who had the ball when the referee saw it, he can, he can roll it like dice and give it, like up. And give it up, and so it, it's hard to tell. Let me go to Aaron Rodgers for a second. The, the Green Bay Packers are really good, and they're really good because Aaron Rodgers is great. Mm -hmm. He's great. 
Tom Brady is maybe the greatest quarterback of all time. And right now, Aaron Rodgers, I believe, and I think you believe too, is better than he is because he gets rid of the ball so quickly. Improvi in, in, the, in the critical drive, athlete. what was he, seven for, nine for nine, 90 yards, He's whatever, great. a touchdown. He makes them. He doesn't have his best receiver. No. Jordy Nelson doesn't have him. Doesn't have him all year. So, so he makes that team go. What I cared about was the trash talking afterward. When Aaron Rodgers stood there and said, I guess God was a Packer fan. <laughs> He was taking a shot at Russell Wilson. This from is a deserved year. shot. From last year. From last year, when Russell Wilson essentially, more than implied, strongly, you know, God was on our side. And I, one of the things, this is personal to me, as a, even as the grandson of a Baptist preacher. Don't, don't, don't invoke God That's in a football game. That's Play your game. Take your credit. Thank God for your health if you want to. But don't tell me whose side he was on. No. And so Aaron Rodgers, and you know, I am not a Packer fan by birth. But I love Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers went right back in Russell Wilson's face and said, well, whose side was he on they, tonight? That's right. They beat him. That and game Aaron, Aaron Rodgers' him, point would be that there's more important things for him for to worry about. A lot more. More important. Seriously. After all the bluster by Rex Ryan all week long about how excited he was to beat the New England Patriots when they came to Buffalo, Ryan conceded after yesterday's 40-32 to 32 loss that it was all on him. Ryan said, and I quote, Bill Belichick out coached me. We did a horse bleep job, and it's my responsibility, unquote. Well, Von, how much should this temper the in real enthusiasm in Buffalo? Not at all. It shouldn't. And by the way, I love what Ryan did there. I mean, he did what a coach ought to do. You know, we lost. It's on me, fellas. And there's a lot of stuff that Rex Ryan does that I don't like. But I like this particularly in that situation. He didn't have to invoke Bill Belichick. I thought they both did a good job. Buffalo hung in there. They got punched in the mouth by the best team in the business. Why would you temper your enthusiasm because you lost a close game to the team that last I checked is wearing the Super Bowl championship belt? Here's the thing that I didn't understand, and I think we went through this. I know you hate when I bring up the odds from Vegas. Yeah, I don't care. But New England went into that game as only a one-point favorite on the road. Well, wait, no. Don't say nobody cares about it because care. everybody cares about it. I don't care, care what they care about. They're one-point favorite on the road when they had a great day against Pittsburgh in their opener, just as good as Buffalo had, and they had more time to rest because that was a Thursday game, and they were playing a team that they were, hello, 23-3 and three against, and they were led by a guy who had, I think, 466, 466 and 3. Are those numbers I can interest you in? Well, the, the notion One going point. into this Stop it. That, that, that Tom Brady was somehow going to be worried about this defense, all he and Bill Belichick ever do to any defense coached by Rex Ryan is shred it. Yep. And he's not alone. I don't want to. Rex Ryan not alone. Most defenses are shredded by Belichick and Brady. I think Rex beat him in the playoffs. Okay. Think, but when he was with the Jets. Again, overwhelmingly, yep. Yep. everyone loses to them. Yes. I, Look, Tony, I think Buffalo's But it shouldn't temper any something. enthusiasm. The quarterback is good. They haven't been in the playoffs in the entire But they can't have century. a hangover either. They can't now say, okay, Rex we were Ryan close. is making this happen. This is a good thing that's happening in Buffalo. And again, they like win. you say, if you lose to the Patriots, so is everybody else a thousand Point of groin. times. Because everybody else who goes in with their game plan, Bill Belichick has a game plan that he devises week by His week. His is usually better. Week by week. His is better than urine, right? All the time. Yeah. Can you say that on the air? I just did. Y O U R apostrophe N. I want to make sure. Up. Tender ears. When we talked during the games yesterday, Tone, by old fashioned telephone, <laughs> you were all on Twitter over Johnny Manziel throwing a couple of touchdowns. I love Lady Johnny Browns, Manziel. Browns, Pats, the Titans. Love you were so excited. His coach, Mike Look Pettin, agrees with you, saying after the game, quote, Johnny is definitely arrow up right now. Close quote. It appears Josh McCown is still dealing with concussion protocol, so Tone. By the end of the week, should Manziel keep the starting job? And does yesterday's performance mean he's turning the corner? I have never heard the phrase arrow up before. Have you heard that? But I liked it. I like arrow it's, up. It's not bad. Yeah, it was better than Mike Cowboy. Is a pretty good talker. Good. I like it. Um, let me take the easier part of the question first, which is, should he start again? Of course he should. He's 1-0 at the moment as a starter. He's a number one pick. He's a Heisman Trophy winner. The other guy, I know he's your boy, has been in the league 13 seasons now. How many Super Bowls has he won? Hot to try. How many Super Bowls has, has Johnny he won? been hot to try? So Johnny Manziel deserves a chance to start because everything he does is, is exciting. The harder question is, has he turned the corner? And I would say, you cannot make that judgment yet. That's a crazy judgment. You, you got, can't. You got nearly a minute. You want me to talk about Johnny Manziel, a guy who I, I sort of still root for. Fun to watch. Cleveland. They're irrelevant. Why are we talking about Johnny Manziel all the time? time? Who would you like to talk Carson about? Carson Palmer. Carson oh, your Palmer. hometown boy, one of your 12 hometowns? It's, what's his record? What's his team's record? 2-0. And, oh. and you know what he is in the last 17 times he started a game uh, for the Arizona 14 Cardinals? 14-3. and three. 15 and 2. Very good. All right, so Johnny Has Manziel. Has he turned the corner? He's turned it a couple of times. He's lapped should, the Cleveland should Browns. Should he continue to start? 
because it's just a matter of time until he gets hurt. Because that's his history. Okay, well, I mean, you know what, Tony? If he gets hurt, then they better have a better they backup solution. Arizona they look looks good. really and They look a hell of a lot better than the than Cleveland Browns. Listen, understand. listen, listen. Are you rooting against me? No, that? I'm not rooting against him. It's exciting. Him. That seems to be easy for a lot of people to do. He, it's Tony, exciting. He, he, He's like a gnat out he there. He made one of those plays yesterday that was like his time at Texas A&M. Right. Where he ran around, right. found some space, right. and launched it. Right. Tony, it's Cleveland. They're one and one. They're irrelevant. You know, Why do you get so excited about this? This is so interesting. Irrelevant. Because about 10 or 11 years ago, you would have said about Cleveland getting LeBron James. They're Cleveland. Who cares? I They're did. Cleveland. They had to make the playoffs. First. You were wrong. They had to make the playoffs. You're wrong. He was in Miami. He now. said they were irrelevant. According to the Miami Herald, and Dominic and Sue, your boy, disregarded play calls sent in by the defensive coordinator and started freelancing in a loss against the Jaguars Shock. yesterday. Sue signed the richest contract ever for a defensive player, and in two games with the Dolphins so far, he has hello no sacks and two tackles. We're well, on big deal, little deal, no deal. You know, Tony, my inclination is to say big deal because it's in Dominican Sue and you paid him all this money. And he's got to be the centerpiece of what you do defensively for the next couple of years until you get tired of him and try to ship him somewhere else or cut him. But I'm going to say no deal. Here's why. Anybody paying attention in the NFL, in coaching ranks or the executive ranks, has to have known, and they would do this with one phone call they find out to anybody who's ever coached in Detroit. Then Dominic and Sue's not paying attention. He's going to do what he's going to do. He can wreck your offense. He can be a great player still. But sort of running the plays that were sent in from the sidelines, that sound like a Dominic and Sue? He's been freelancing mostly, yeah. we're told, since the day he came in the league. Why would he be any different in Miami? I just want to say for the record that the coach of the Dolphins, Joe Philbin, said he has found no evidence so far that Dominic and Sue did this. But you believe he did it, and I believe of he did it. Of course I do. Um, it's okay if you're Reggie White and you're Lawrence Taylor, and you got things on your fingers called rings. <laughs> it's okay to do this, even though I'm not sure they did. Well, Lawrence Taylor probably did. Lawrence I'm not Taylor. sure Reggie White did. And Dominican Sue has how many Super Bowl rings so far? Zilch. Yeah, so far. Even playoff none. wins? I think zilch. I don't know. Think, I don't know. Zero. I mean, the fact that two games in, that he would go to a team that he presumably wanted to go to for all that money because he liked the team, and he would disregard these calls. Are you surprised? Uh, no, you're not. No, you're not. You know where we're headed with that? We're headed into what I like to call Albert Hainsworth land. This is not a good thing to do. He, he, he and he's he's a dirty player. He can be fined or suspended almost every play. I think this great is bad. defenders freelance. This is a big more. deal, Mike. The big deal. I think great defenders freelance more than, than players on offense because of the way the game is structured. In the second a, game, we should of ask the guy that we know in both life. You think Deion Sanders freelance when he was out there? Different position. Okay, uh, different okay position. but a vulnerable position on the corner where different you get exposed. Positions. I mean, if a guy sends in a you play. You think Sue's going to follow the letter of the law anywhere he is? No, you don't. Big no, deal. You don't. Let's take a break, but coming up, what was the bigger surprise in the weekend? Alabama losing or Ohio State edging Northern Illinois? Northern Illinois is good. Get off Northern Illinois. And does LSU's Leonard Fournette deserve to be compared to, wait for it, Walker. Well, he ran over that guy, this kid's right? He ran over that guy, and he broke away on the first play of the game, right? He's For about 80? Yeah. Football's back, and it already feels like the playoffs thanks to One Week Fantasy at DraftKings.com. With millions of dollars in prizes being paid out each week, every play in every game could take you closer to a life-changing payday. Hurry to DraftKings.com now. Use promo code PARDON and play for free with your first deposit in this Sunday's $1 million fantasy contest. This isn't fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. Enter PARDON for free entry now only at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. Welcome back to PTI. I'm Lisa Salters in Indianapolis with a DirecTV team report. Tonight features two teams that have very different histories when it comes to stability at quarterback. Just five different quarterbacks have started for the Colts since Peyton Manning was drafted in 1998. And Manning and Andrew Luck have started 94% of those games. With Ryan Fitzpatrick now at QB, the Jets have flown out 14 different starters in that same time span. Now back to PTI. It takes a certain kind of person to email a TV show, and I will leave it at that. Really? Let me see what's first. What person is that? You ready? Yeah. More surprising, Bama losing to Ole Miss or Ohio State scraping by Northern Illinois? Well, Tony, they were both surprising. Um, Ohio State didn't get good quarterback play, and that's the most surprising element of that, even though... 
you know, Northern Illinois is good. This Alabama game, people picked Mississippi outright, even though they never beaten Alabama two years in a row, and they're playing this game in Tuscaloosa, and you knew there was peril there. I don't know that I thought they were going to win the game, but Mississippi is better team right now than Alabama. Mississippi's in the same conference with Alabama. They recruit the same players as Alabama, and they beat them last year. So while that is surprising, it is not as stunning as Ohio State against a good team, but a team from the MAC. They Northern won 11, Illinois is games. in it the whole way. Yeah. At the end of the game, they got the ball with a chance to score and That's maybe right. win That's the right. game. They, did. they hold them on defense every time they have to. And, and we had heard from our friends at the end of game one that Ohio State just give them the championship. They They're the best in the world. You know what? Okay, That's the surprise. Well, here's what one. you're just missing. I believe, and you know, I follow the Big Ten. I believe Northern That's Illinois better. could finish fourth in the Big Ten this year. I'm not dismissing it. Yeah, They're not are. in the Big Ten. Yeah, you are. Mississippi's in the same division of the same conference. Sometimes they should be out of it. Does Leonard Fournette remind you of Hushel? This comes up because Tony Barnhart felt that, that he looked at the LSU running back, looked like Herschel Walker, and so Barnhart's he called... Covered yeah, the SEC, the SEC for a thousand years. Yeah. And so he calls Vince Dooley, who was who? The coach of Herschel. Georgia. Yeah. Okay. So, and he said he looks a little bit like him. Yeah. Now, I think the sample size is too small. Okay, the best two running backs ever in that conference are Herschel Walker and Bo Jackson in any order that you want. Okay. And so I'm I even eliminating the Heisman Trophy winner. George Rogers. In Ingram. Well, I was South George Carolina Rogers. in the conference at that point? Well, in a, so that's, that's, that's what I don't know. Then. This kid's really good, he's, he's, but he's great. maybe this year, Mike, maybe running through Auburn isn't as difficult as it has been in the past. It, it may not be. We've seen them stumble already, Auburn. But, Tony, you know what you can usually identify early on? As you mentioned, with Herschel Walker, we knew this three games into his career. That's right. Bo Jackson, five, six games into the time he actually touched the ball. You can identify in the SEC a guy who has the blazing speed and the ability and the power. to either run They're over very you or get around right. you. And Fournette looks like Help. that yes. player already. Looks like Bears watching. He does. He does. All anyone does, like people like you, mm -hmm. is mock the Redskins. Yeah. But aren't they now the favorite for the NFC East? Tony, the Cowboys, without all the people that we've chronicled. They're all gone. The Philadelphia Eagles, at this point, stink. They're I running around get better. crazy. And the Giants have fallen and they can't get up. The Giants Cannot. just look done. Cannot. Here's the problem for the Redskins. I, look, the Redskins right now, when you can run the ball and play that kind of defense, if your coaches uh, dismiss their egos, and a lot of times coaches won't do that, and you use this formula, the Redskins can win nine games. Yes, they can win a division. With Alfred Morris the question is, Matt Jones. is, is he going to do that? You know, yeah. come on, this is your um, team. You know, again, I remember what you say and I remember what I say. And I was very critical of Kirk Cousins because he hadn't won hardly at all as a starter. Right. He was very good. He didn't go down yesterday. the field, but no he picks. didn't make any mistakes. No picks. He handed the ball off in the right way. And their defense, Redskins defense, for the first time in a long time, was awfully good. They stopped St. Louis every single possession in the first half. Looking around at the dregs of that division, seven and nine can win. Now I'm saying this today, seven and nine. Thursday night, if they go up to at Giant lose, Stadium, they lose, they lose and I shut Redskins up. have gone. I fold have a lot ten. of dreams die at Giant Stadium. I fold the ten, ten, right? That happens. Your team, your hold up, your team. Will the Saints DB, Delvin Bro, ever live this down? Yeah, you got to look at this play because as the ball is in the air, it's caught by a Tampa Bay receiver, and Mr. Bro continues to look for it in the lights, even though it's already been caught. We lost it. So that was, that was bad, and it's hard to live that down. The, the much larger issue on the New Orleans much Saints, now, now an 0-2 team, is that apparently Drew Brees' a shoulder injury is such that he could possibly lose games. The combination of Drew Brees and Sean Payton for six or seven years really good. was dynamic what offensively and now if 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 Breeze is out at his age that's this is sort of a big deal to me tony because not only did they win they revived helped revive new orleans after, after the largest crisis the city had ever sure. faced sure and so if they're sort of dumb because drew Brees is and drew Brees lived there and cared old, about the city he doesn't he's sort of a I, I just find him one of the most likable players yeah. I've ever encountered yeah. in the NFL. Yeah. And if Drew Brees has something wrong with that shoulder at his yeah. age, it, makes it. You, it gives you pause. He's had a great career. Yes. Thanks for writing. As always, if I read your emails, I'll be sending you a bathroom mirror. Hey, 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 hey. Let's take one last break, but still to come, Wilbon celebrates the birthday of his new starting quarterback. Welcome to have him, Tony. Welcome. Welcome. And after missing an extra point to lose to Cal, is the worst still yet to come for Texas. Do you see what they've got in the next three games? Yeah, I do. I have looked at it. It looks difficult since none of those teams has lost yet. And now, for Geico's edition of Stuff Found in Your Car, we go inside your side door pocket.
Hello, yes, the crumpled receipt with gum in it. From your anniversary dinner, you sprang for expensive wine, your server was Beth. That dinner was a couple hundred dollars. Money you could get back if you switched to Geico and saved hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. I bet you'd save that receipt. Frame it even. But really, where did I go wrong? Was it the corkage fee? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com today. Art in the Interruption is presented by Crown Royal Regal Apple. Smooth to the core. Please drink responsibly. Part of happy hour. Happy time, people. Happy 28th birthday, Jimmy Clausen. This one's for you, Will Bond. Okay. You have called Jay Cutler the biggest waste of money in Chicago sports history. And? So now that Cutler is hurt, let's give a big Windy City welcome yeah. to Jimmy Clausen. Yeah. 14 and 23, just 121 yards and a pick. Good luck. Good luck on our way, hopefully, to Joey Bosa or Connor Cook. I mean, you know, you can, you can, tank you can, the you season. can do well with the first or second pick in the draft a couple of times. I'm just saying. Tank the season. I'm not saying. Happy anniversary, Jameis Winston. Around this day last year, you dressed in your pads and uniform. You ran out for warm-ups despite being suspended for the entire Clemson game. This drove Jimbo Fisher totally up the wall, provided yet another reason why Winston should leave school early. And yesterday, he got his first NFL win for Tampa Bay. And knocked us out of the elimination pool. Yeah, because we took week. the Saints. We lasted one week longer this year <laughs> than we lasted last year. Happy trails to this Texas extra point and possible win. After making a great comeback against Cal, Texas needed only this extra point to tie the game with a minute left. The kicker, Nick Rose, who was shown on internet video making 80 yarders, <sighs> couldn't make this from 20 yards out. The next three games for Texas, number 24, <sighs> Oklahoma State, at number three, TCU, and number 15, Oklahoma, uh-oh. No matter what the problem is, don't you think he has to go nine and three, minimum eight and four to, to, to be around This is year? Texas. They don't, yes, they don't rebuild. and the either. AD who hired him on. is out Bye -bye. in one of the quickest turnarounds you've ever Bye -bye. seen at a big school. Yeah. No, this is... It's not good. This you gotta is win. Got to win. No errors, one omission. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch reports that Adam Wainwright has been cleared to resume baseball activities uh -oh. and aims to be a reliever. Uh -oh. That'd be tough, tough for your team, wouldn't it? Welcome back, though, Adam. Let's go to the big finish. Let's do it. The Raiders beat the Ravens. What has happened? The whole league is top turn, but the, but the Ravens. They're on two. They should be two, and they should have won both those games. See, Sizzle, I thought you were going to miss him. Carson Palmer, four touchdowns, beat the Bears. Are you surprised he's playing this well? No, as long as he's healthy. When he's healthy, he's very good. His problem is stay healthy. staying healthy. Yeah. Texas Tech beat Arkansas. Cliff Kingsbury said Brett Bielma got his, quote, ass kicked, unquote, twice in a row. Your thoughts? Well, this is some payback for some things Bielma said in the Texas camp this summer for high school kids. Stay tuned on this one. This is good. Jason Day won again. Tiger Woods had back surgery again. What's the bigger deal? It's hard to see the Tiger has much of a future anymore after all these surgeries. Jason, Jason Day is I want to watch East Beast. this week. Beast. Last one, Angels and Astros start a three-game series tonight. He got it. Time to go with Trout and Cooper. <laughs> Jason, switch. You're bailing out. You're bailing out. Switch horses. Switch horses. Go with the Angels. We're out of time. We'll try and do better next time. And I'm Tony Kornheim. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow. Knuckleheads, check us out on iTunes. Jason Daniels, unofficial doctor, physician of PTI. Way to go. Yeah. He loves you because you always get the analysis right on the injury. It's always longer. <laughs> Last week, Julie Carroll posted a status that read, Just had the most delicious banana ever. It got two likes and four comments. Well, Julie Geico also wants to make a comment. What if we told you in as little as 15 minutes you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico? With those hundreds of dollars, we bet you can find another banana equally, if not more delicious, than the one you had last week. Hashtag go bananas. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.